Welcome to the Unity Game Dev. My name is Frederick, and today we'll be discussing lighting in Unity 2020. This course is geared towards beginners, so if you're an expert, move along. But first, the message of inspiration. Did you guys know that the company One Button, the creators of Mr. Jump, earned approximately $18,000 from ad revenue per day during the first five days of launch? That's crazy. They actually got a feature on the Apple Store and that helped them along. I'll create a video later about getting your app featured on the App Store. The topics I want to cover today are direct versus indirect light, global illumination, mixed real-time and baked lighting, and the types of lights you find in Unity. As always, you can follow along by downloading the GitHub Unity project uh, in the links below. So let's start with global illumination. Well, in fact, to understand global illumination, we have to step back and get a good grasp of direct versus indirect lighting. So in the room right now, I have a light just off to the left of the camera and it's shooting rays all over this room and it's bouncing off the walls and all the surfaces. So the light that bounces just one time off a surface is called direct lighting. So this might be a photon of light traveling from the light source, hitting my nose and jumping right back into the camera unaffected by other surfaces. Um, indirect light would be uh, a photon that jumps, uh, hits for instance, this wall to the left and then hits the cute Targier on the poster behind me and then jumps back to the camera. Uh, and so the light that bounces off the wall that hits the Targier uh, could affect the color of the Targier. Maybe it's supposed to be more of a brighter orange, uh, but it changes a little bit and gets maybe a little bit of a grayish tint to it. So indirect light is uh, the way uh, one surface or the light of one surface affects the light of another surface. So when dealing with indirect light, we are talking about uh, light that bounces two or more times. So when you see Unity running global illumination tasks, it's concerned with indirect lighting or how the light of one surface affects another. So okay, I think we're ready to open the Unity project and start the demo. So let's get into global illumination in Unity. Uh, first, we, uh, first I want to make sure we isolate specific lights in the scene so we can uh, get a better idea of what's going on. Um, usually, uh, when you start a new project in Unity, there'll be some kind of amb ambient light that lights up the whole project. That's what's happening right now. And we want to make sure it's turned off. Uh, to do that, you can go to Window, Rendering, Lighting. Okay, and I've just dragged my lighting window as a tab in here on the right for easy access. So uh, I've gone on ahead and just turned off real-time global illumination and I've turned off baked global illumination. We'll get back to this in a second. Uh, but if you go to the environment and you look at the environment lighting and the source is set to color and right now it's just white. Okay, so it's just white light kind of uh, shining up the whole scene. We don't want the ambient light to affect the scene right now. So to remove it, you have to set it to black, okay? And uh, as you can see, the objects are not receiving any light at all right now. Cool. Now let's discuss this scene a little bit. Um, I have two lights in here. I have um, a area light and it's actually called a baked area light and I've got a spotlight and the spotlight is currently disabled uh, but its mode is real-time and we'll get to that later. 
the baked area light is currently enabled and it's a rectangular shape and it it once it's turned on and active uh, it will illuminate light from one side so how do we get this guy to work so since it's baked we have to make sure that uh, the baking system is turned on to do that go to your lighting and then make sure you've got the scene tab clicked and you got to turn on the baked global illumination so we turn it on and you see this global illumination bar at the bottom right running and it bakes the scene and now you can see that area light that's in the TV affecting the objects around that but here's the catch it will only affect objects that are marked static why do objects need to be marked as static to be included in the baked global illumination so there is a texture being created every time we change something in the environment the lighting the effects of the lighting changes and that has to be baked into this check textured light map it's pre-calculated right now it was just pre-calculated in the unity editor if i move something again that's mark static you see the global illumination being kicked off and the reason why it's actually running every time i move an object affected by it is because I have the auto generate uh, turned on if I unclick it and I move something you see uh, it's not affecting the texture at all right now so if I want to bake it manually I just turn off the auto generate and click generate lighting and then you'll see it's generating it it's a good idea to turn off auto generate when you are not really playing with uh, the lights in your environment and you're just placing a bunch of objects because it does eat up your CPU or GPU depending on the type of light mapper that you're using and we'll get to this a little bit later um, so if you want to have a smoother workflow you can have to decide when you want to turn this auto generate on or off if you are indeed using um, baked light maps which probably you'll be using it Anyways, I'll be turning it on for now. Okay, now how do you mark an object as static? So the couch over here, if we go into inspector, here in the top right, you see it's marked as static. Sorry, the sofa. English is my second language, so sometimes I... Uh, get the names of things wrong anyways um, this little vase over here marked as static uh, anything you see illuminated right now is basically marked as static the walls marked as static this guy over here what is this that's a soccer ball why is the soccer ball not being illuminated by the baked area light right now well, the soccer ball is not marked static. If we go ahead and click on static, the GI will build, generate the new texture, and now you see the soccer ball is illuminated. So why did programmers build the baked illumination system into Unity? So it turns out that light calculations are extremely CPU or GPU expensive. So to lighten the load on your game at runtime, uh, these, uh, these calculations can be baked into the light map texture in the Unity editor as you're working on the scene. The catch is that you cannot move any of your objects at runtime. Whatever set to static, they have to stay static as we can see in the next scene. So let's take a closer look at uh, the soccer ball and specifically the script I've attached to it. So 
the T is pointing to this dot transform and I update the the Y position in each frame by adding the move am amount to it, which you can set in the editor. And I then after that, I just check if the Y position is greater than 1.5 or less than 0 0.168. If it is, then just flip the direction by multiplying negative one to the current uh, move amount. So let's play this scene. Well, actually, before I do that, just uh, notice the soccer ball is still marked as static. So we're going to play that and see what happens. So the game window shows up and we see the soccer ball seems to not be moving, even though we have a script attached to it that should be moving up or down. Now, just remember this is still marked static. So let's go look at the scene, see what's happening there. Uh-huh. So you can see the transform is actually moving up and down, but the soccer ball is not because he marks it as static. So let's just pause this guy, I mean, stop this guy again, and let's remove the static from the soccer ball. And if we play it now, you can see it going up and down. And in the scene, we see the transform is not separated from the object. Okay. So what do we do in this situation? I mean, the soccer ball is a moving object. So we can bake its shadow into the light map because it's going to be moving at runtime. So in this case, we have to introduce a new light that's set to real time. So before I do that, I'm going to just uh, unmark the soccer ball as static okay so now it's not affected by the baked area light and then I go to the spotlight and I turn on the spotlight now currently the soccer ball is not in the path of the spotlight so it's still not being illuminated by it but when you bounce it up and down it should uh, cross the path now another thing to realize is if you go into lighting You'll see we still don't have real-time global illumination turned on and we don't need that for direct light effects and that also means the shadow of the the ball to show up we only need that if we want indirect lighting uh, real-time indirect lighting but again it is deprecated so i recommend not using the system until unity comes out with um, a replacement for it which they are working on it right now I'm very curious to see the quality of the new system they're working on and I'll post a video once they deploy that okay so the soccer ball is the soccer ball is not marked static the spotlights turned on and the baked area light is turned on and again the spotlight is uh, the mode is set to real time. So let's play this scene. Okay, and you can see, I'm just going to pause it. You can see the soccer ball, it, once it moves into the path of the spotlight, and I've set the spotlight to, to illuminate a blue color. Uh, it gets illuminated and you'll also see the shadow being cast against the wall. The spotlight is shining from behind the wall onto the, the, the wall across the room. And you can see the shadow against the wall.
Okay, I've repositioned the spotlight to give you a better view and boom. There you can see the shadow that the light's casting. Sorry, the shadow that the soccer ball's casting once it enters the spotlight's area of illumination. So Unity's baked global illumination system is mainly concerned with surface-to-surface -surface illumination or how the light uh, bouncing of one surface affects another and that is indirect light but it also bakes direct light into the um, the texture by default and we can show you how that works let's click on lighting scene and we're gonna go to the number of bounces that we're modeling right now so it's set to none right but even though it's set to none we still see this baked light um, illuminating the scene that's because the direct light or the one bounce uh, the one bounce is still included in the baking that's by default if we set it to one and now the GI is running again it's baking it you'll see the scene becomes a little more illuminated because now we're dealing with two bounces of light and that's indirect light there's two bounces of light let's go to the scene and actually I'm just going to take out the spotlight so we can just deal with the big lighting All right, so right now the light from the baked area, light is bouncing off these walls and kind of illuminating uh, the wall there in the back. Uh, let's set it to two bounces. Each time we increase the bounce count, uh, you'll get the GI will take longer too. And let's go all the way up to four. All right, it doesn't make too much of a difference here. Anyways, I'll just keep it to one bounce. Now just remember, when you set it to one bounce, that means one indirect bounce. So that means the light goes uh, and bounces twice because the indirect light bounces twice now the light is shining out bouncing one time then two times and coming back into the camera or the sensor if we set it to none we're just dealing with direct light so it's just the light comes hits the wall and bounces directly into the camera or the sensor okay Let's get a little crazy and change the default colors of these walls so we can see how the colors blend a little better when we uh, play around with the, the bounce count. So let's set this wall to yellow. And we'll set this wall in the back to red. Okay, uh, the lighting is still set, well, it's set to two bounces. Let's start with, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Sorry, the bounces are set to none. So, we don't see the red wall affecting the yellow and vice versa. Okay. Now let's set the bounces to one. So now we've got indirect lighting turned on and actually you can see here on the floor the 
yellow bleeding into the white floor and the red bleeding over here and it's probably yes it's affecting the back of the couches so that's pretty cool and let's set it to two very cool and four hmm. I wonder why this light mode over here is not being Take light right now let me just go sometimes see there's an issue um, you can just uncheck auto generate and just generate the lighting there we go all right so that looks pretty cool so yeah you're gonna have to play around with the number of bounces in your scene uh, to make it as realistic as you want it to be and just remember that uh, the higher you go the longer the pre-baking takes another thing to take note of is that your texture your light map texture can actually uh, is actually used when your game is running in real time on a device like a Xbox or a switch or a phone uh, to be to overlay real-time light so it could be used for that but again right now there is no um real well you could use a real-time global illumination de de deprecated system but it, i just don't recommend you doing that uh, and just waiting till unity gives a replacement if you do use this system um, right now and you put a lot of time and effort and is attached to a certain um, rendering pipeline then you could run into issues in the future when let's say unity gets upgraded and they get rid of this system it won't be available in this uh, in 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 unity uh, for you to go and you know rework or your all your lighting s settings and switch to uh, you probably have to re rebuild the whole you know rendering pipeline it's in my opinion it's just not worth it but you know it kind of makes it difficult right now for game studios who are busy developing or midway developing um, kind of throws a wrench into um, their workflow so I don't know how they're gonna deal with it but hopefully unity will come up with a replacement soon on to our next topic mixed real-time and baked lighting so if we look at our area light if you look at the mode well there is no mode because it says it's an area baked only so the mode is always going to be baked only for that let's turn this guy off no I think my uh, lighting is still on manual, so I'm going to just set it to auto generate. And the scene should turn black. Okay. Let's go to the spotlight. And let's turn it on. So only the spotlight is illuminating direct light right now. Again, the real time illumination is turned off because it's uh, deprecated so the real-time global illumination is deprecated so that I'm leaving that off and we just have the spotlight running right now so the spotlight can have different modes you can have real-time mixed and baked if it's set to real time, it will only be applied to uh, real time systems. So those are systems that are used at runtime. And again, 
Unity is uh, the Unity's real-time bake system is deprecated, so we can't use that. Um, then we have baked. If we click baked, it is shining up the f whatever's in the path right now and mark static. Let's turn it to see what happens if we turn it here. The couch is Oh, it looks kind of cool actually so yeah the spotlight is illuminating with the blue color everything in this path marked static but since it's set to baked it's being pre-calculated into a baked static light map there's another mode that is widely used and that is mixed and that combines the elements of real time and baked So everything that needs to be baked will be baked. And then if you have real-time systems turned on, that will also show up. Where's our ball? So if we click play right now. We see the balls moving. casting a shadow because of the direct light direct light will um, always be cast by the real-time lights and then you see the baked information from the static elements also included in the light so it includes both what won't be included right now is real-time global illumination so that will be um, the effect of let's say light bouncing off this ball onto a wall and then bouncing back into the camera the only thing we're seeing right now is the light bouncing off the wall of the ball directly into the sensor or the camera or the shadow that's being casted I bet you're curious to find out where the light map is stored so if you want to take a look at that, go to lighting, scene, bake light maps, and there you see it. There's a texture. It's a 5 by 512 by 512 texture. And you can click on open preview and get a little more information about it. I'm not gonna go on all all these settings. Honestly, I don't actually understand all these settings yet. That's something I have to read up on. Uh, I just want to show you if we if we um, enable the area light again, how this light map will change. So we enable it. The GI kicks off. And if we go to the, now you can see actually right here, the, the texture already changed. It's now including the, the area lights in there. And at runtime, when your game is running on a device, this texture will be overlaid on the, all these objects. Let's talk about the different types of light in Unity. You've already been introduced to area lights. Uh, those are good for illuminating things like a TV um, or a light under a kitchen cabinet. Turn that off. Spotlights are good for simulating a lamp, desktop lamp or street lamp. They have a cone that can be shown at different angles. And 
they can be set to mixed real time or baked mode. And I want to introduce you to a direct light. If you go to game object, light, directional light. You see the whole scene is being illuminated uniformly. Direct lights are very good for simulating the sun. It doesn't matter how close or far away the light is from the scene, it will always have the same effect. The only time it will change, uh, or you can see it change, is when you change the angle that it's shining at. So to do that, first we have to set the light from real time to baked, since we're only using the baked system right now. no shadows oh so we got to go set the shadow type uh, you can select between no shadows hard shadows or soft shadows soft shadows are more realistic okay there you see the shadows have been baked so if I was to move this up or down you'll see the shadows are not changing at all The only time you're going to get that to change is if you change direction. It's kind of like the sun coming up over the earth and change di changing direction. So uh, let's grab that guy with the GI finish, baking. And now you see the shadows are being cast in the opposite direction. And the last light I want to talk about is a point light. Let's turn off the directional light so you can see that guy. I apologize about all the background noise. There's some vacuuming going on up there. I've uh, been working on this video for quite a long time now. And I just want to get it done. It's a Sunday night. Tomorrow it's back to work. So I got to get it done. Um, anyways. So we're looking at a point light. Uh, the point light basically sends out light in a uniform matter. Let's just put it back to... Oh, we can actually play with real time. That's fine too. You'll get the idea. So you can just kind of move it around. It's pretty neat. It looks pretty. You move it around. Um, so it's similar to a spotlight, except that the spotlight uh, shines uh, in the, you know, a cone shape direction, in a cone shape pattern and you can set an angle on where it has to shine this guy's just shining uh, you know 360 degrees all around and uh, this could also be good for maybe simulating like a light coming off a ferry flying around maybe even a s street lamp similar to the point light you can use it in a street lamp uh, let's see what happens if we set it to Baked. So yeah, it's interesting when you set it to baked it I mean, it lights up the room, but it doesn't have quite the same feeling as when it was uh, running the real time with the direct light, of course. So let me put it in mixed, which will be both the baked lighting, so global illumination plus uh, the real time light. 
the red light shining out. Yeah, it looks better. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit, uh, if not more. Um, please send me a shot of dopamine by subscribing or giving the video a like if you truly liked it. And hope to see you soon. Thanks.